This beastie can carry up to 55 fully equipped, rip it fueled, hate filled nicotine powered Marines up to 600 miles deep into the Devil's Stronghold without breaking a sweat. I recommend you grab yourself a beer and break out the shop rags because this is everything you need to know to get spun up on the sky crushing tight, the CH-53 Super Stout. Let's rewind the clock a bit. It's the early 1950s and the US military needs a heavy lift helicopter that can handle the toughest jobs. Enter the Sikorsky CH-37 Mojave. The Mojave was a monster. At the time, it was the biggest helicopter in the world, first taking flight in 1953 and entering service in 1956 with the US Army and Marine Corps. Now the Mojave wasn't just a heavy lifter, it was a pioneer. And even though it was undeniably stout, its piston engine design limited the power it could produce to take heavy hauling to the next level. What was needed was a bird that could lift more, fly faster, and operate for longer than the aging CH-37. After six years of testing, evaluation, and initial fielding, the Navy and Marine Corps had their answer, the CH-53 Sea Stallion. The CH-53 beat out the Chinook to win the contract, although it did so with the Chinook putting up a hell of a fight. Instead of adopting the Chinook's tandem rotor design, the Sea Stallion opted to stick with the tried and true single main rotor, albeit going for a very, very large one. It's hard to put into words just how big this thing is. Its main rotor spans over 72 feet, providing a rotor area of more than 4,000 square feet. With an empty weight of 23,600 pounds and a max takeoff weight of 42,000 pounds, this bird is no joke. For context, the back ramp alone is bigger than some entire helicopters. Hell, the tail rotor gearbox is about the same size as the main rotor gearbox of a Blackhawk. The proportions of this thing are absolutely insane. But of course, we can't forget that when you've got to move big weight, you also need big power. Under the hood, or rather, on top of the fuselage, the CH-53 was originally packing a pair of General Electric T-64-6 turboshaft engines, each cranking out 2,850 horsepower. But apparently someone in the DoD thought that was only a modest amount of power, so the later variants like the CH-53 Delta got an engine swap bumping the power from 2,850 to a whopping 3,925 horsepower. This made for a combined output of nearly 8 thousand horsepower. Those are some pretty tasty numbers, which not only gives this pony big power, but also some pretty impressive speed. The CH-53 is capable of cruising at speeds of 170 miles per hour with a top speed touching 200 miles an hour. And it can put down those impressive numbers with an operational range of 620 miles without ever having to refuel. Now this flying giant isn't only used to haul big cargo. Often it's used to transport our nation's most precious resource of up to 55 fully armed Marines or 24 stretchers for medevac missions. And if the landing zone is a little hot, the Sea Stallion isn't completely defenseless. Each bird comes armed with twin door mounted 50 cal machine guns with the option to add a third ramp mounted 50 cal for just a little extra seasoning. Later models even got some fancy upgrades like shaft dispensers and infrared countermeasures to dodge enemy attacks. These birds are downright imposing to see flying overhead. In fact, a Gulf War veteran shared a funny story about a group of Iraqi soldiers surrendering to a CH-53 in Kuwait because they thought the refueling nozzle was a huge gun. He says, and I quote, when they saw this huge helo with a big gun, they just gave up. Clearly the Sea Stallion commands attention wherever it goes, and the same could be said for what goes on inside of it. A former Stallion mechanic once joked that the CH-53 is always leaking hydraulic fluid on the inside. He said, if you ever get into one that wasn't leaking, get off. Now, that means it's out. Turns out that's by design. The hydraulic line seals are designed to leak to prevent dry rotting. So if it's not leaking, that means it's empty. But the CH-53 family didn't stop there. Let's take a closer look at one of the most legendary variants and see how this beast took things to the next level. Meet the Sikorsky MH-53 Pavlo, the big brother of the CH-53 family. This long range special ops bird was so large, so deadly, and so menacing that it became affectionately known as the Super Jolly Green Giant. So what exactly was the Pavlo's mission? Well, think James Bond with rotors. Low level, long range, and undetected penetration deep into enemy territory. No matter the conditions, day or night, regardless of the weather, its job was to drop off, supply, and pick up special ops forces. 
Now, although the Pavlo served many years with distinction, its undeniable rise to fame came from its appearance as the Decepticon named Blackout in a 2007 Transformers movie. And of course, who could forget its iconic appearance in the Call of Duty video game franchise? The goal of trying to get that kill streak going was some serious business back in the day. But no matter how beloved any piece of equipment is, time marches on and warfare continues to evolve. The CH-53C Stallion, as capable as it was, needed an upgrade to meet the increasing demands of the battlefield, which would usher in the next evolution in heavy lift helicopters. Now the formula for rotary heavy haulers is actually pretty simple. When you need to make big power, you start with big engines. When you need to make even more power, you add even bigger engines. And when you really don't need any more power, but you just wanna flex on all the other nations, well, what you get is a Sikorsky CH-53 Echo Super Stout the current heavy lift champion of the United States military. The development of this Haas began in the 1970s and didn't enter active service until 1981. The upgrade design philosophy of the CH-53 Echo was beautifully simple. Take everything that was great about the OG Sea Stallion and give it more of everything. Let's go down the list, shall we? Six rotor blades is admittedly a lot. Uh, let's go ahead and give it seven. Two engines sounds like plenty, Ah, screw it. Go ahead and give it three. And man, those engines make a ton of power already. But a little more wouldn't hurt. <coughs> Sensation. Basically, Sikorsky took the moderationist for weak approach, and I'm here for all of it. Yeah, you heard that right. They added a third engine, up from two. Because why the heck not? And furthermore, each of those three engines received an increase from 3,900 to 4,400 horsepower. For those of us who aren't math scholars, that means the total output went from 8,000 to 13,200 horsepower. Boy, that escalated quickly. That is a 5,200 horsepower increase. And in order to put that power to use, a seventh main rotor blade was added. Of course, I already mentioned that earlier, but what I left out was the overall rotor diameter went up too. I'm sure they had their reasons, but 72 feet, I guess, wasn't quite big enough, so they increased it to 79 feet. That puts the main rotor area at a staggering 4,900 square feet. This thing has more than double the rotor diameter of the size of a standard American home. Insanity, just pure insanity. But it gets even crazier than that. So we've added even more rotors and made them bigger. We've added even more engines and made those bigger too. So it's a pretty safe assumption to say that its performance has proportionately increased. And you'd be correct. All these additions add weight and bring the Super Stallion's weight up to 33,000 pounds or 10,000 more pounds than the outgoing Sea Stallion. But in exchange for all that weight and performance, the max takeoff weight has increased from 42,000 pounds to a staggering 73,500 pounds. That's 31,500 pounds more than the previous model. Let's live here for a moment, shall we? Because I'm just thrown by these numbers. So internally, this bird can carry 32,000 pounds or 16 tons. Externally, the Super Stallion can sling up to 36,000 pounds or 18 tons. Now that's a ton of weight, no pun intended. And the Super Stud crews have to have a way to protect themselves during an operation. Now the Super Stallion keeps the twin 50 cal door gunners, but decided to make the ramp mounted 50 cal standard issue instead of an optional extra. All right, all right, okay. I like your style, Marine Corps. If two Modusas are good, then three is obviously better. All right, so what's the point of all this? Like, is the US just showing off at this point or is there some tactical advantage to having this much power on tap? Well, first of all, Yes to the former. America is a country full of divas and show-offs and we get off proving that we are the biggest, baddest, and best there is, full stop. Second of all, if you need to get guys on target deep into the fight, well, wouldn't it be awesome if you could drop the boys off with a sick ride instead of forcing them to exercise their leather personnel carriers? That's where the Super Stallion gets to really show off by bringing the boys in the fight with an LAV-25 slung underneath. Now, as awesome as the LAV is, it's Bushmaster 25 Mike Mike is only gonna keep a few heads down. Maybe take a few clean off. But what if instead of taking out a handful of baddies at a time, you wanna reduce whatever crappy hiding spot they've got into fresh road gravel? Well, the Super Stud's got you covered there too because it's more than capable of casually dropping off a M198 155 millimeter howitzer with plenty of ammo and a full crew right where you need it. Now, I think we can all agree that the Super Stallion is one seriously capable piece of kit 
but can we just take a moment to give some credit to whoever the heck is naming these things? I mean, seriously, the Sea Stallion, the Super Stallion, I mean, what's next? Like the only thing we're missing now is the Sea Dragon, am I right? It is my pleasure to introduce probably the single coolest name ever, the MH-53 Echo Sea Dragon. This sexy beast is what the Navy uses for its heavy lift duties, long range mine sweeping, and airborne mine countermeasure missions. The Sea Dragon is equipped with enlarged fuel sponsons and can tow various mine sweeping gear, making it an invaluable asset for Navy operations. Now I know it seems counterintuitive to sweep for underwater mines from the air, but this method is actually really, really effective. So effective in fact that from October 1990 to July 1991, six Sea Dragons were deployed to the Persian Gulf and in the process they cleared 668 square miles of sea lanes. That's the equivalent of nearly 8,000 linear miles with a 93% effectiveness against moored mines. So throughout this video, we've seen some seriously impressive actions from the CH-53, but all that peak performance comes at a hefty price. In fact, in 2017, it was determined that the CH-53 Echo needed a lot of TLC. And by a lot, I mean a staggering amount, with each bird requiring 40 maintenance hour per singular flight hour. Some estimates even put the operating cost of the Super Stallion in the same ballpark as an F-A-18 Super Hornet, which is just craziness to think about. A dang helo costing about the same or more to operate than a fourth generation death dealer. Insanity. But as we all know, Marines are stubborn and weren't ready to retire their beloved Super Stallion just yet. Ongoing maintenance programs have extended its service life, ensuring this heavy hitter remains operational until the new King of the Skies fully takes over. Which is an absolutely perfect segue, if I do say so myself, to the latest heavyweight contender in the helicopter world, the CH-53 Kilo King Stallion. This bird is an evolution of the long-running CH-53 series, but with even more of everything. More power, more lift, and even more room to show off. The King Stallion sports three upgraded engines, new composite rotor blades, and a wider cabin. And in keeping with the tradition of bigger is better, the King Stallion yet again reminds everyone why it's, well, the King. Once again, the empty weight went up this time from 33,000 pounds to 44,000 pounds, which is just ridiculous. It's, it's absurd how heavy this thing is, but you're getting something pretty tasty for the trade-off, which is mo power. And I don't mean just a little more power. You're getting a shit ton more power. The GE Turboshaft engines got an upgrade to the GE Tango 408 model, putting out a downright stupid 7,500 horsepower each. What did he say? The new CH-53 Kilo King Stallion is now pumping out a total 22,500 horsepower. <laughs> That's 9,300 more horsepower than the Super Stallion. Or, put another way, the new King Stallion received more additional power than the OG C Stallion put out when it was first introduced. The King Stallion is almost three times more powerful than Granddaddy C Stallion. Y'all, can we put some respect on the Marine Corps and their obsession with the obscene? All this power allows the King Stallion to have a max takeoff weight of 88,000 pounds or 44 tons. This is 14,500 pounds or 7.25 tons more than the aging C Stallion. And not only can this beast haul more weight, but it's also roomier inside, allowing it to carry a Humvee internally. It's also got a ton of other geeked out features, such as a digital glass cockpit, fly-by-wire controls, and haptic feedback to assist the pilots in knowing what's going on at all times. The Marine Corps plans to get their hands on 200 of these bad boys, costing a cool $25 billion. Now in 2003, the first order of 35 Kings was placed for $2.77 billion. Clearly the King Stallion has the muscle to back up its King status, but there's one bird out there that's standing in the way of this beast completely dominating the skies. So I really didn't want to talk about this thing, but I guess we kind of have to. Meet the MV-22 Osprey, the aircraft that tries to do it all and ends up making everyone, including myself, scratch their heads. 
The US Marine Corps has been phasing out the trusty CH-53 and in its place, been trying to bring in this tilt-a-rotor Frankenstein. Now here's the thing, if we're being honest for just a moment, what the Marine Corps wanna use the King Stallion for is kinda overkill. Its lift capacity is more than enough to handle the M198 howitzer or an LAV. But the Osprey can almost, not quite, but almost can handle the same external loads and theoretically can do it over a longer range and do it faster. Keyword there, theoretically. Now here's where things get tricky. The Osprey is expensive to buy, it's a nightmare to maintain, and what's worse, the reason I hate it, is it's got a terrible track record of crashing. Now listen, I get it. The Marines have been integrating the Osprey for years. It's seen action in combat, humanitarian missions, and disaster relief. It's proven it can do the job, but it's not without its teething problems and its critics, me being one of them. Look, the Osprey is a cool concept, but it's too complex and not as reliable as the Old Faithfuls. It might be the future, but some, including me, might say it's the future we just aren't quite ready for yet. Now all that being said, the CH-53 series has shown us that sometimes bigger is in fact better. The future may be uncertain with complex machines like the Osprey trying to take over, but right now, the CH-53s are still here and still kicking some serious for the Marine Corps. I hope this video did justice to the Rotary King of the Skies, and if you like this video, then please check out the bird that almost beat out the CH-53 for heavy lift supremacy, the CH-47 Chinook. And if you wouldn't mind, don't forget to share and subscribe, or don't. <laughs> it's a free country, you can do whatever you want. CT6, out.